Hello, my name is Dr. Asley. I'm a board-certified fellowship-trained orthopedic spine surgeon. I'm the medical director here in Sacramento Spine Center. In this segment, I'll be discussing with you the latest development in terms of groundbreaking research that's being done here in Sacramento Spine Center. To do that, I would like to go back in time and explain to you a little bit about the history of the spine surgery so you would understand where it's coming from and therefore where it's going. In 1960s, the best imaging of study that was available to surgeons was x-ray. We did not have CT scans or MRIs. We would get x-ray of somebody who's suffering from back pain and you would see that the uh, cushion between the two bones has deteriorated. Therefore, they called it degenerative disc disease. To treat that, the spine surgeons came up with a surgery called fusion surgery. They would take the vertebrae above and vertebrae below of a damaged disc and turn it into one bone, eliminating motion and therefore eliminating pain. To do that, we had to have an anchor that can hold on to the bone above and below while the fusion is solidifying. Therefore, we came up with screws, what we call the pedicle screws. It's a large screw that gets inserted into the vertebrae and has a tulip that can accept a rod. So what you would do is that you would put as many as these as you need in the uh, subsequent vertebrae, as many levels that you need to fuse, and you connect them with a rod, and within the next six months, the bone will solidify between these vertebrae and will turn into one bone, therefore the fusion. This is an example of the pedicle screw on the spine. And that worked well, fairly well, till recently. However, now, spine surgeons face a significant problem. To explain that, I need to talk to you about the anatomy of vertebrae. A vertebral body is composed of two types of bone. The inside bone, which is spongy bone, we call it cancellous bone, and the outside shell, which is a very dense bone, we call the cortical bone. The inside bone, cancellous bone, gets affected with aging and osteoporosis significantly. The outside bone, a lot less. Therefore, what happens is that when we put screws at the aging population, we end up with uh, surgeries that have a very high rate of failure, these screws becoming loose, basically. We wanted to solve that problem. And we knew in Sacramento Spine Center that the cortical bone, the outside shell, was the answer. Therefore, we invented our device we called ALPS, which stands for ASLI Laminar Plating System. It's a flat plate, titanium plate, that sits outside the bone and gets anchored to the bone by these Composite straps, these straps are stronger than same size steel cable, and meanwhile, they um, eliminate pressure points. And this is the example of ALP, which gets anchored to outside shell using the strap. The strap comes underneath the bone, comes around, goes through a hole, and gets tensioned like a zip tie, and then you turn this screw right here, and it clamp clamps the strap, and therefore, this holds onto the vertebrae very strongly. As you can see right here, this is an example of ALPS at two levels. Now, ALPS has two very important um, advantage over the traditional screws that are being used today. As you can see right here, to put the pedicle screws in, you have to dissect the paraspinal muscles significantly laterally. And research after research has shown that if you dissect the paraspinal muscles beyond the facet joints, which are these gliding joints right here, that denervates the paraspinal muscles significantly. Therefore, you end up with dysfunctioning muscle after the surgery. And of course, the grip of these screws come from the cancellous bone, the weak bone inside. On the other hand, you can see in ALPS that you need a lot less dissection. Actually, dissection up to the facet joints, not beyond. Therefore, this should um, maintain the function of paraspinal muscles significantly after the surgery. And of course, it grips the cortical bone, outside bone, not the cancellous weak bone, without penetrating it. What we're trying to do here is that we want to let people know that in Sacramento Spine Center, not only we care about our patients, but we do care about everybody who suffers from back pain. And we want to improve the quality of life of all the people around the world that are suffering from back pain. Uh, now the biggest question is when this device becomes available. That question is very confidential. However, all I can tell you at this point is that 
our prototypes have outperformed our expectation, and that's very important. We um, received innovation showcase in um, Congress of Neurological Surgeons in 2015. We presented this in New Orleans, um, and uh, we got an extremely good reception. And we've been invited to actually give a lecture in Congress of Neurological Surgeons next year. I hope you enjoyed the segment, and uh, have a nice day.